interested in seeing how I DIY these gorgeous wall sconces? Then stick around and see how. Starting off, I'm going to take this craft artisan floral foam from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut that entire block in half to give me two pieces. To get a rounder edge, I'm going to take this ribbon roll and use it as a guide to cut around it. To cut this foam, you could use a very sharp razor blade, but in my case, I'm just going to use a sharp serrated kitchen knife. Hi everyone, welcome to another video. If you are returning, I thank you so very much. If you are new here, hello, hello, hello. My name is Meek. I appreciate you for clicking on my video. Here so far, I do a lot of DIYs with hopefully a lot more to come soon. If you find this video enjoyable today, please hit that like button and feel free to subscribe to the channel. I'll be more than delighted to have you here. Once my foam is all cut out, I'm going to go in with this folk art metallic paint in the color Silver Argent that I purchased from Walmart. I'll be applying this paint onto the top and bottom of the foam shape with this small craft brush. Once my foam is all covered in paint, I'm going to take this small battery operated candle that I'll be attaching later and poking a hole in the center of my foam and pushing it completely through. The candle sort of feels as if it doesn't want to go through because the foam is so firm, but I just poked the candle from the top then poked it from the bottom and that seemed to do the trick to get it all the way through the foam. For my next step, I initially wanted to use these skewers but I didn't have enough in my stash so I just went for these clear drinking straws instead. Now going in, I'm taking my straws and cutting them at an angle. I'm doing this for two reasons. One, I'm doing this because it'll help me pierce my foam better and two, because it'll allow my straws to sit at an angle. The technique I'll be doing here is for placement purposes. And I'll be placing a straw, one in the center and then one on each end. What you see me doing here is taking a straw and poking stutter holes in the foam because it is so firm. I'll take a straw and poke a hole and then I'll go in with my hot glue gun and then I'll place the final straw in and I'll hold it there for a second to let it sit up while my glue dries. Once I have my three starter straws all glued down, I'm going in with two more straws and gluing right in between those three, trying to get them as even as possible, making sure to keep them at an angle. Once I'm satisfied with their placements, I'll just hold them and allow the glue to dry.
Now in this first little section here, I'll be placing four straws. Using that same technique, poking four starter holes before I place my final straws. Of course, as I do with all my straws, I take them and cut them at an angle, apply my hot glue, place my straw, then hold it in place while I allow the glue to set up. As you can see, I finished applying my four straws to my first section, and then I just went ahead and did the same thing on the opposite side. For this back section, I'll be adding three straws, and I've done the same technique as all before, poking starter holes and then taking my straws, cutting them at an angle, applying glue, placing straw, and holding it while the glue sets up. I went ahead and completed my final back section with the remaining three straws for a total of 19 straws altogether. What I'm doing here is taking a marker and trying to mark the middle and the two side straws just to keep myself aligned when I go to place the bottom straws. And what I'll be doing on the bottom is the exact same thing that I did on the top. I'll be poking my starter holes and applying my straws. In the bottom, I'll be adding 19 straws as well for a total of 38 straws. And here I'm just finishing up my final section on the bottom half and I'm just going to hold these straws into place making sure to keep them aligned and that they are at an angle while the glue sets up. And here is what it is looking like so far with all the straws glued on. I'm sorry it does not all fit in the frame right here. But what I did not show you is me cutting the straws at different lengths. I just took my scissors and snipped each end as desired. Now I'm taking my round double edge mirror from the Dollar Tree. This mirror is really old. I've had it for years. I've used this for quite many things. I'm just going to take this 70% alcohol and clean my surface really good. Now before I do anything to my mirror, I'm going to flip it over and with this wire that I believe is from the automotive section in Dollar Tree, I'm just going to cut about two and a half inches and bend it into a horseshoe shape. I'll be adding this to the back of my mirror. I'll add a bit of E6000 along with some hot glue. Now 
once I've laid my hot glue I'll cover that with a piece of cardboard that I've split in half because I don't want this to be too bulky. Once I've let that hot glue set up, I can now flip my mirror back over. I'll be adding a bit of glam to the edges with this rhinestone trim. I initially was going to do this with hot glue, but the E6000 gave me more control and had time to position my trim to the placement that I wanted. I'm just taking my E6000 and dotting around the edge lightly and then I'll take my rhinestone ribbon and place that on top of the E6000. Once I'm done laying my trim, I go ahead and with my scissors I cut off the end. And then taking my hand, I go ahead and push and position the trim around until I'm satisfied with the placement. I'll apologize because in the next scene, it'll look as though I skipped the step, which I just accidentally deleted the footage. But what you won't see is me applying my rhinestone ribbon. I apply that to the center of my foam and then I flip my foam over and then apply a generous amount of E6000 as well as some hot glue and attached it to the center of my mirror. And now I'm taking these Hannah Hong 10 piece LED cordless Christmas tree candlelight. And in this set, you'll get 10 candle clips, one remote with the battery, and 10 candles. And they are 4 inches tall, and they need one AA battery each, which are not included. I'm just unscrewing mine and placing one Dollar Tree Alkaline AA battery inside. And here I'm just showing you how easy the setup is. Once you screw your light bulb back on, your candle will automatically turn on. And if you just take your remote and press off, you can control the candles. And as you see, they both are controlled by one remote. Now I'm just going in with my hot glue and I'm going to add a generous amount to my hole making sure to get as much as I can. I want my candle staying firmly in place. I'm going to get as much as I can inside my hole and then I'll take my candle and place it in making sure to leave a little extra room on the other end for my other candle. Holding that candle in place for a second, making sure I get it to set up exactly the way I want it. I'm flipping it over and I'm applying glue to my next hole, making sure again to apply a generous amount and then applying my second candle. And these are how they turn out. Of course, I've made two for a set. And these are just gorgeous. I think these have exceeded my expectations. I love them so much. The only thing I would change if I would change anything is I would make the candles silver. But I still think these are okay. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Should I paint my candles silver or leave them white? Here's how they look in the dark with their lights off and then with that remote I'm just going to turn them on to show you how they work together and oh I just love this so much. These are gorgeous. I love this. This is probably my favorite DIY so far. With these 
these lights, you have the option of flicker, you have the option of slow and fast flicker. As well as the option for brightening and dimming the lights. that's all for today's video I appreciate you guys for watching I hope this video was helpful I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you decide to come back for more but until then take care bye